successfully selling HUD homes. I want to say thank you to the South Carolina Association of Realtors and also Mike and Jessica and Sharon, all the folk here at the uh, office, and we appreciate you tuning in today. My name is Daryl Gibbs, and this is my lovely wife, Wendy, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to be working with you today to try to explain some of the things uh, concerning HUD Home Store and uh, the HUD process. Let me also invite anyone that's listening, if you would like to do a radio interview with us. We're trying to reach in to a lot of the diverse neighborhoods in South Carolina, and if you're interested in doing a, a real estate interview on our radio talk show, we are on Mondays and Fridays, uh, WYPJ and Anderson, but it does stream throughout the state and actually uh, internationally. So we'd like to have you a part of that. If you would like to do that, give us a, uh, a email at daryl at gibbsrealty.net. That's D-A-R-R-E-L-L -L at gibbsrealty.net. We'll be more than happy to have you uh, as a part of the show and do one with you. Today we're going to talk about uh, successfully selling HUD homes and how to navigate basically the most one of the most important websites uh, in dealing with HUD, and that is HUDHomestore.com. I hope that all of you right now will just go to your computer and pull up HUDHomestore.com. We're going to uh, present uh, how to navigate the system and also give you a chance to submit your questions to us in the box at the top. You'll see that there are uh, there's a place to submit your questions, so feel free to do that. We will take some time at the end of the webinar to uh, to try to answer those questions and uh, to try to give you as much information as we possibly can. Now to sell a HUD a property, a HUD home, one of the most important things is, your, is that your broker must be registered with HUD. Uh, that's one of the most important things in order to receive what's called an NAID number. That's the identification number that HUD uses uh, to identify the different brokers and those agents that are under that broker. If your broker, uh, if your broker is registered as a licensed agent, you can also sell HUD homes using that broker's NAID number. Now you say, well, Darrell, we do not have at this time an NAID number. Well, if your broker is not registered, then he or she needs to register today. We're going to talk about uh, it in just a second how to actually register. We'll have the slide in a minute, but make sure that today you register. You, the application takes about 45 days, that's six to eight weeks to process. So I would go ahead and be uh, uh, on top of that today. In other words, be proactive about it. And of course, one of the things about your NAID number that's very important for you to remember, even if you are registered with your NAID number, is that that, applic uh, that application and that broker uh, NAID number needs to be renewed annually. It isn't like a situation where you can, you know, once get the uh, NAID number and then later on uh, just depend on it you know, being continual forever. It's going to have to be something that every year uh, you uh, renew annually because there's no notice that's, that's sent to you about the renewal of that NAID number. If your NAID number and you check it today and it's expired, it usually takes about 45 days to process. Yes, and you ask where, <clears throat> where can I find the information on the HUD homes? Where can I find the information on if my NAID status is um, active or inactive or when it expires? You just go to the, the main HUD website nationwide now is HUDHomestore.com. We're going to pull it up here, and this is um, HUDHomestore.com. This is where you'll search for properties, place your bids, where the buyers actually go and search for properties. It's where you can check your NAID number, and if you'll notice right here, I'm going to put my cursor over the bar here, the NAID application. Um, if you click on that, that's where your broker will go to see if he or she is registered with HUD. You just scroll down where it says check current NAID status, the little bar there in the middle. If you click on that, it brings up a box um, and it asks for your employer identification number or possibly your social security number, however your broker is registered with HUD. Uh, once you put that in, you hit submit, it will pull up 
uh, your NAID number. It will tell you if it is active or inactive, and it will give you the date that it expires. And believe me, you want to when you see that date that it expires, you'll want to mark your calendar two months prior to that so that you have all your paperwork in before it expires so that you don't have to worry about um, having an expiration and not being able to bid on a HUD property. Um, if you also see, um, it says the selling brokers must provide. It gives you everything there that you need to submit to get your NAID number or to reactivate it. It's the SAMS 1111 form, 1111A. They'll also, they ask for an IRS letter or official document. Uh, that document has to show your EIN number or social security number and the name of your company, just stating that that's, um, that is your EIN number. A uh, copy of your real estate license with the expiration date, a copy of your driver's license with expiration date, and your recent utility bill or a bank statement showing your company name and your company address on that statement. And, th and again, this is for the broker. Your um, kind of scroll down here. Let's see. Two fingers scroll. Oh, perfect. Here we go. We're going to scroll down to show you the rest of this page. And again, this is for brokers. As a selling agent, all you have to do is make sure your broker is registered. and then and then that is a step one the bottom box here it's going to show where you send your applications to for South Carolina it's got an address here it's an Atlanta address now that's where you'll send it in you also have an 800 number there 1-800 call FHA if you have any question or information uh, or need any information regarding your application, uh, you have a number there to call. I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here. Um, it has right down here, if you can see my cursor, right here is where the um, SAMS 1111 broker application is. All it is is a one-page form, very easy to fill out. It has an instruction page with it. Uh, if you have any questions on that, you could call the 800-FHA number to have qu uh, your questions answered on how to fill it out. And then the 1111-A form is just your broker signature form. So it's really not, uh, not that difficult to do. It's, it's um, really a simple process. It's just getting it in in time. So today, that's the first thing. If your broker's not registered, first thing they need to do is make sure they're active with an NAID number. And the second thing that they will have to do, your broker will have to now register on HUDHomestore.com as a registered bidder. And then you as the selling agent will go in after your broker and register as a selling agent. This so, is one of the most important things and one of the biggest differences with this new contract is that every person that uh, wants to sell a HUD property mm -hmm. has to first of all have their broker. This is very important, the process. The first thing you have to do is to have your broker to sign up under this bidder icon. And after he or she uh, completes this form, then every agent after that can be able, the, the, the agents that's underneath that broker can also sign up. The way that HUD communicates now with you in letting you know uh, if you've met the bid requirements or if you have won the bid, it's by email and of course all this information you're going to be providing uh, to them when you sign up on under the bidder form and so that's very very important we cannot emphasize how important that is because that is their method of communication and I've, I've just gone up and I've clicked on bidder and it shows you the bidder registration form it's a one-page form takes you maybe two minutes to fill out um, it's just asking for your, you'll make up your own username and password, you'll confirm your password. Uh, they ask a couple of security questions and then you'll go down here, you'll, um, in the middle of the page, NAID information. Just want to make sure you know that your broker and you will register as a selling listing broker. And then under the NAID role, we'll just click on that, there's a drop down box. Your broker will register as a principal broker, the first um, drop down and then when you go in and register after your broker you'll register as a selling agent very simple doesn't cost anything and the one good thing about 
uh, registering as a as a bidder you do not have to do this but one time it's not an annual thing it's just a one-time thing so as you'll notice we've we've looked up here where you you register as a bidder you notice also the public your buyers this is the site they will also use to search for properties um, they can search under their own criteria they can log in and save searches so it's very user friendly um, this is where you will go when you go to place an offer on HUD Home Store. You'll actually log in right here, use your username and password. That's how you'll get on to HUD Home Store to be able to place offers. I know that a lot of us uh, have uh, maybe clients we're working with or we'll say the public that are asking us questions about the HUD process or about properties that are coming online. It's very important for you to encourage them. It'll save you a lot of time in putting them in your cars and uh, going around looking at different properties and all of us know how that goes. But uh, one of the most important things is that they are able to tell you exactly what they want or they, could, they can actually have HUD to send them emails about the properties that are available, school districts, the whole nine yards. I mean, everything that they need if they'll go ahead and sign up, then it will send it to them. And that way, once they find something that is agreeable with them and something that they'd like to take a look at, they can get in touch with you. So it just is going to make it very much more easier uh, for we real estate agents. So please, please make sure that, that, mm -hmm. that you do that. I'm just going back to the home page here. We've looked at the NAID application. You've got your other bars across this gray area here. Um, this is the home page. You've got your HUD news. That will take you to the HUD.gov site, which is one of the major HUD websites on information on um, if you wanted to find out how to become a nonprofit, if you wanted information on FHA lenders or the FHA programs. HUD.gov, that's going to be a very good informational site. Your resource tab is going to take you there as well. Um, it's just good. You can just search for anything on the HUD.gov related to HUD, and it will, it will give you a lot of information on that site. You find a broker tab, you say, um, why would I use this tab? Mainly the buyer. will be using this tab when they find a property that they like on here. They're not working with a broker. They're probably going to click this tab. To find a broker. And as you see, it comes up, you can search by broker name, state, city, or zip code. Most of the time, they'll be searching by, by, um, by city or zip code. Uh, if we go down here, to, we'll have to put in the state first. You'll probably almost always need to put in the state, which is South Carolina. If we just put in uh, Columbia, it'll show you who who is showing up registered under HUD Home Store, uh, where the where the buyers can go to to get an offer put in, and, and as you'll notice, there's there's like five, six, seven pages of brokers. Uh, the broker it does a rotating schedule. Um, right now we see Horton Company actually showing up as your first scroll down. If you were to search again, this is a really neat feature. Exit Real Estate comes up next. So it's a rolling thing where not one real estate company is always showing up as number one on the first page. And that's one of the most important reasons, too, for having your broker and your company to register uh, as uh, uh, one of the bidders uh, because 
from that information, it rolls to this find a broker screen. So if you're in a registered NAID uh, HUD approved broker and you have your information in the bidder system, then you're going to be able also to be uh, one of the real estate brokers that they take a look at when a buyer is trying to find someone to show them a property. And one thing we ran into, I know a lot of you have multiple offices, it may be just one broker, one NAID number that you're using, but it's multiple offices. Uh, what you can do, because if you're just showing up with one NAID number, you'll only show up in that city when a buyer searches that your NAID is registered with. So what you need to do, what HUD says, is you go in and you, you register for a separate NAID number for each location. That way you'll have a separate NAID number for each one, but you will show up on HUD Home Store when a buyer is looking for whichever city your um, office is in. So that means you don't have to just have one NAID number. Make sure you have one for each broker in, in each office if you have multiple offices. Mm -hmm. And um, the next, um, we're just going to go over these tabs because these are kind of important, some good information. The property contacts tab. This tab I use a lot because if a property goes under contract on HUD Home Store, if you've been watching it at all over the last year and a half, when it goes under contract, it actually disappears off the site. You really don't know if it's been withdrawn or if it's gone under contract. It's just kind of a mystery. So, so now they have um, this property contact screen where you can actually still pull up that property under under your state, street, city, zip code, or property case number, and it will um, show you the contacts for that property. We had one recently that went under contract. Um, I'm going to just put in the case number for time's sake. Um, 445212. And as you see, I just put the case number in, I'm searching. And here it'll pull up that property. It's Upper Meadow Way in Greenville, South Carolina. I click on the case number, and it pulls up who the asset company is, who the listing broker is, and who the field service manager is. So any property, even a property that hasn't come available, yet like you have a buyer driving down the street and they see a property and they say this looks like it might be a HUD property but it's not on HUD home store yet if it's in the system at all if, if any if the field service manager has started to do any inspections on it it will show up on HUD.gov in this section only it won't show up when you're searching for properties but it will show up here so it's really a neat tab another brand new tab this one Bid results has only been out like maybe maybe a month now. This this is a great tab. By the way, you guys sometimes think, well, maybe they don't listen to us. Do you know that because of so many mm -hmm. of your requests and your feedback, which we need really, because of your feedback and saying, you know, in the past we've been able to see bid results, and now on the HUD uh, uh, HUD store.com we were not able to see anything now we're able to give bid results like once we once did so this tab is here because you had an impact and because you let us know so congratulations this is something that we all have been used to in the past going to see bid results yes because you, you know you may have a buyer or you may see a property disappear and you're wondering what happened um, you can either put in the case number like I'm doing now or you can search by county or city or the street address that's probably what you'll have is the street address you just click your search button and you'll see some wonderful information um, it's they give you of course the address 
they give you what the what was accepted as the net amount to HUD. I don't know where you'll ever get any kind of information like this that's public information. It's showing you that this property, the net to HUD was 145700 You have an owner-occupant. The OO stands for an owner-occupant. Is the purchaser. Tells you the dates and tells you which um, listing, which selling broker sold the property. So this is all great new information that was never available before on HUD Home Store. Uh, you have the last little tab here is your facts tab. I could spend two weeks on this fact tab. This is where if I have a question, the first place I go is here. Um, there's videos, there's tutorials, there's phone numbers, web addresses, questions. Every question you can almost think of is here with an answer to it. So this is a great resource for anyone that's wanting to, um, to ask questions about HUD properties. This one right here. Okay, and here we go. Okay, just another little thing on this site. Um, it shows you how to search. Let me go back to the home page. It gives you all the search criteria that you need here when you're searching for properties. Um, you can search by county, city, street, zip code. You can break it down almost any way by bedroom count, bathroom count, price range. As you can see, there's all kind of ways to search for properties. If I was just to go in, and you can even search by buyer type. If you had an owner occupant or a good neighbor next door um, buyer, you could search by good neighbor next door properties. If you just click on here, I'm just going to do a, a very broad search by just South Carolina just to pull up the properties. I have to hit my search button here. Okay, and you'll see all the properties are going to start um, populating here. And you have many, many pages here of properties. It actually shows you over, over here there's 129 listings in South Carolina right now that are available. Uh, it tells you, it gives you the picture of the property, the case number. When you click on these, it'll give you a more um, detailed screen of that property, gives you the address, gives you the price. You say, what are these little um, symbols here? It gives you the statuses. And this little symbol here, there's three symbols you'll see that I know of. Is a uh, This one is like a little blue person with a dollar sign. This means that this property is what they call a low-valued property. And some properties that are under like $30,000 are available for minimal commission. I know that makes you all happy because anything under $30,000, your commission's um, going to be um, a little bit lower. But HUD gives a minimal commission on the properties with this notation of $1,250 for the selling broker and $1,250 for the listing broker, a total of $2,500. So that's, a good, that's good news there. Also, if you have a property that's just come on the market recently, you'll have this little new symbol, the little red ball. Uh, and then you have the symbol with the arrow, with the dollar sign. This is a price this property is, has, has had the price reduced from the initial uh, appraisal value. So the price has been reduced on this property. You have your, um, shows your different listing periods here. We have it, um, them listed here and Daryl is going to speak a little bit on those on our next slide. They actually have three listing periods uh, that uh, is recognized by HUD. And of course, some of the terminology may have changed from if you've been doing HUD a while. Uh, you know, we used to call it owner occupant, all bidders, and 
uh, by some other names, but now there's just three. So keep these in mind what they are, okay? First, you have what's called the lottery period. A lot of times these properties are not in the MLS. They may be on the site, but uh, the HUD is not, not released them to go into the MLS. And basically the reason for that is that these are uh, being offered to government agencies, uh, nonprofit organizations, and when noted, you'll find the good neighbor next door, that's GNND. So you have the lottery period. That's usually the first period that all properties go through. The second group is what's called exclusive. And that's what we all used to call owner-occupant, the OO. And uh, so it's owner-occupant. And uh, also during that time, there are some government agencies and nonprofits that also can bid during that time. The third is your extended period. Whenever you see under your listing period, it says extended. That means it's open to all bidders, whether investors or someone that is um, maybe for the, uh, you know, buying a, another property or buying a second home. Now, the question comes to our mind, uh, who can buy uh, HUD homes? Uh, buyers fall into one of three categories when buying a HUD home. First of all, you have owner-occupants. So let me explain to you what an owner-occupant is. An owner-occupant, as defined by HUD, as a person that must live in the home as your primary residence for at least one year. Um, and then second, that they also require you to not have purchased a HUD home as an owner-occupant in the last two years, okay? So you've got to live in it one year and you could not have purchased uh, a HUD property as a primary residence in the past two years. So that's the first group, owner-occupants. Second are the investors. And of course, we all know them. the investors are those that come in during that extended period of time. And then the government agencies and HUD-approved and HUD approved nonprofit organizations, they are the ones that uh, are the third group. Let's talk about the lottery period in just a second. Uh, we, we were talking about the three different periods of time, uh, three different groups and three different periods of time that a property uh, is available on HUD. And of course, the lottery period is the first of these. Uh, this listing period actually lasts for about seven days. And as we mentioned before, you will not find it available in the MLS. Uh, it's available to approved non profit agencies, also other government agencies, and only if noted, your Good Neighbor Next Door program. And of course, as Wendy was saying a while ago, you can actually go to the screen and you can pull up any Good Neighbor Next Door properties. These are properties that are offered to firemen, policemen, teachers, and EMT workers in certain designated areas. Now, let me mention this to you. On this particular type of uh, period of time, the lottery period, especially when it comes to the good neighbor next door uh, properties, HUD does not pay a commission to agents or the closing costs on lottery period properties. Uh, nonprofits and the government agencies a lot of times have their own NAID number that they can bid on a property themselves without an agent. But when it comes to good neighbor next door properties, Uh, and, and they're indicated as a good neighbor next door property, that agent must submit a bid for them. So it's very important that, and I'm just saying FYI uh, to all the agents that are out there, if you are working with someone on a good neighbor next door property and HUD does not pay a commission on it, it would be better for you to have some sort of agreement in place prior to presenting that offer, uh, maybe as a buyer's 
agent. It's very important for you to remember that because, of course, we all want to get paid. We love doing this business, but, you know, it, we We also have to get paid uh, for our groceries, all right? <laughs> so that's, their, <laughs> that's your lottery period. Now we're going to go to the exclusive period. This is what was called the owner-occupant period. The, these properties are your new listings, and this uh, uh, program is uh, the period of time is actually broken down into two categories. The two categories that owner occupants can bid on are insurable properties and uninsured properties. We're going to talk about both of them. You have the insurable properties that FHA will insure sometimes as, as is and then other times with an escrow. And then you have the uninsured properties. We'll talk about those. Those are properties uh, that uh, may need a little bit more work to them, okay? Uh, also on your uh, HUD home store uh, page, you'll see uh, on any description of a, a property what the, uh, that listing entails and also what kind of listing it is. The listings will have different listing codes that reflect the financing options on that particular property and about the property condition. Uh, when you see IN, in fact, let's pull up one if you don't let's mind, Wendy. Mm -hmm. uh, just pull one and up actually, and we'll you see. Can, yeah, and you can pull these up by over here. I'm going to actually pull up a property that has a repair escrow okay. that is available right now. While she's doing that, let me go over the different codes for you. You have mm -hmm. three codes, okay? You have IN, which means it's insurable. Basically, that's saying that the property meets the FHA 203B requirements, and there's really no obvious repairs for this particular property. It's ready to move into once you close. You may, you may have to do some cosmetic things, but, but as far as it being insurable by FHA, it is. So that's IM. IE means that the property is insurable, but only with an escrow. The property is eligible for that FHA 203B loan if necessary repairs are completed and if those repairs are less than $5,000. I think you have one pulled up here. Yeah, and I've got my cursor right where the FHA financing. This is where you'll find these codes. It's right here where the cursor is on the right here. Okay, so basically you have insurable, the FHA will insure it, but with an escrow of $2,750. Mm -hmm. These are, th this escrow amount is the amount that they are saying needs to go towards repairing or replacing things in that property in order to make it insurable as an FHA property. And then you have the UI uh, uh, initials, and that, those actually mean that the property is uninsurable. These properties require more than $5,000 in repairs. You say, well, Daryl, uh, can owner occupants actually bid on them? Yes, they can. But, they just, but FHA wants you to know that there's going to be at least 5,000 or more in repairs in order to meet FHA requirements. Now there's still, if you're wanting to purchase this property, there's still FHA type of uh, financing available and that's called the 203K FHA um, uh, financing. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. FHA and insurable and uninsurable with repair escrow properties. Let's talk about the IN and the IE properties, okay? I uh, hope that you guys are getting this. You, you have your IN, you're insurable, your IE, you're insurable with escrow, and then your UI, which is uninsurable. Now with your uh, insurable properties, uh, as it relates to your owner occupants, all owner occupants are given now uh, an extended period of time. Used to, it was what, about 10 days, 10 to 12 days? 10 days. Mm -hmm. uh, to m maybe take a look at properties and get their bids in and everybody was rushing in order to, for that to happen. And HUD recognized that the owner occupants needed a little bit more time to do this. You know, by the time that property gets on the market and cures for a few days, it's gone. So now HUD has provided a 30 day exclusive owner occupant bidding period. And this consists of two sections. You have the first 10 days that, that owner-occupant and that uh, buyer's agent gets those bids in and they're not even looked at. I mean, no one even looks at them until that 10th day. 
But at the 10th day, they can either accept a property and accept the, the acceptable HUD net on it, or they can roll it over to day 11. Mm -hmm. And then from day 11 to day 30, you have a bid period of each day on that property for owner occupants. So the total amount of time is really 30 days. Mm -hmm. The first 10 is blind bidding. No one knows what anybody's doing. They're not even looking at it. Day 11, if they haven't gotten an acceptable bid, it begins a daily bid period for owner occupants. And then on, and that lasts for 30 days. And then on day 31, uh, it opens up now for a, the extended folk, the folk that uh, are all bidders. They're now to, uh, able to bid daily on these properties under that extended period of time. And I've I'm, I'm got my cursor on HUD Home Store on the right there where it says period deadline. Uh, this one is an exclusive property. It says right here listing period. And the period deadline, you see it's all the way through March 15th. So the deadline for an investor could not bid on this property until after March 15th. Okay. Now let's talk about those uninsurable properties. We talked about the ones that are insurable and insurable with escrow, but there are also those properties we talked about a while ago that have at least $5,000 or more, <coughs> excuse me, or more mm -hmm. uh, in financing that needs to be done or, or actual repairs that needs to be done on that property. Now for owner occupants, they're given the first five days to bid on these properties. Notice the time frame, you know, is, is considerably less because a lot of times owner occupants may not have the wherewithal or the financing to be able to get these particular properties um, up to speed in time for them to close. And remember, we're talking about over $5,000 that uh, the FHA is saying that we'll need to go into this property to make it uh, financeable. So the first five days, the owner occupants uh, have their sealed bidding. They can bid on these uninsured uh, properties. If on the sixth day, uh, there's not a bid accepted, then it goes into the all <coughs> bidder status again. So basically, the, your, your investors that you know, are crying foul and saying, well, hey, we don't get to get, come as early as possible. Most of the time, these uh, uninsured properties are ones really that your investors are gonna be looking at anyway. So owner occupants are given the first five days, and then after that, on day six, your investors or all bidders are now uh, able to come on board. What does insured with repair and, and uh, escrow or IE mean? Let's talk about that just a minute. Insured with repair, the IE. It only applies when you're using FHA 203B financing and the repairs are less than $5,000. Now, let me say this to you, and Wendy mentioned this a while ago. In HUD's world, most of everything you want to do is to, and they, and they work with FHA to make the, the to streamline the process of uh, closing these properties. But in their world, FHA rules, okay? Uh, now, what we're talking about is specifically towards FHA. You know, there are, are people who want conventional financing. You're able to get any type of financing you want. But when you're talking about, uh, particularly about FHA financing and uh, uh, insurable properties with escrow, uh, the thing that, that uh, HUD wants you to understand is that if you're using the 203B financing, which is quite normal, those repairs are going to be less than $5,000. Understand this as well, and a lot of times folk misunderstand about escrow. When they see escrow, they think, hey, you know, I'm getting a gift. <laughs> this is not a gift from HUD. This particular escrow amount is placed on top of what you are bidding on that particular property and you're required to bring that to closing. It's not a part of the purchase price, this escrow amount. It's over and above what you're purchasing the property for. Recognize also, and, and I'm sure that if you've been working with HUD for any length of time, uh, you understand that no repairs are able to be done prior to closing on any HUD property. You say, well, my people are moving in from uh, out of state. It makes no difference. Another very important thing, and I'm going to say this in passing, and I think that this is very, very, very important for everyone to understand. HUD does not allow anyone except their HUD uh, agents to open properties. 
At one time, there were people that were giving out HUD keys, you know, right and left. HUD frowns upon that. In fact, you can lose your NAID number if you're not there present with appraisers, if you're not there present with, with folk that are turning on the power and water, your buyers. So you as an agent have to be there. If you are the selling agent, not the listing agent, but the selling agent on that property, you're responsible. If you are a HUD certified listing agent, you should know this, that you are not allowed to give a person the lockbox codes to go in a property. That's the job you send them to the, the buyer's agent or the selling agent and let them open the property. But you've got to be there, ladies and gentlemen. It's very important if an inspector comes by and they see someone wandering in the house and you're not there with them, once again, you take a chance on losing your NAID number. I want to mention that to you. We had a situation like that recently. Now, again, if you are uh, accepting this uh, escrow amount, that buyer has to come up with this amount in cash at closing above the purchase price. On the listing also, you'll see that at the bottom there is an itemized list of those required repairs on that property plus an amount of 10%. At the closing table, the purchaser will give this amount to be held in an escrow account, that, that escrow amount. He'll, he'll give that and the attorney or the closing agent for HUD will keep that in an escrow account. The lender will then order the repairs to be completed within a 90 day period after the closing. And, and after that is done, then they will ha have a license contract to complete those, um, you know, the different repairs. And the FHA uh, uh, mortgage company, or actually the mortgage representative, will inspect uh, that repair, the, the repairs are completed, and the contractor will be paid out of that amount that was escrowed at closing. Yep. You ask a question, you, uh, well, Daryl, why uh, the repairs that I had done uh, doesn't equal, or maybe I have some left over. Or do I get that money back, or does my buyer get that money back? No, if there's any money left over from the escrow that has been escrowed by the closing attorney, uh, that money is applied to towards the loan principal. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to show you how to navigate all this on HUD Home Store, because We've thrown a lot of dates, a lot of time periods, a lot of um, bidding periods up to you. Whenever you're looking for a property, when you get to this property detail screen, which is what we're on, um, over here is where you have your period deadlines. You notice this one is in an exclusive period, which is owner-occupant. Um, we're having that 30-day bidding period, and the time up on this one is on March 15th. Um, it is only available to owner occupants. It'll tell you at the top here, owner occupants, nonprofits, and government agencies can also bid. Uh, Daryl was mentioning um, about the different types of financing, all that's listed right here. If it's an insured escrow, if it's insured, if it's uninsured, that's where it'll be listed right here. Uh, if it's 203K eligible, we're seeing a lot of FHA loans starting to go 203K again. It's starting to be a popular loan. And um, when you when you go 203k if your buyer is wanting to go fha and he doesn't have this escrow amount doesn't have the funds he can either offer below the asking price or he can go with a 203k loan where he will not have to have that escrow money and he'll have more money to do cosmetic things to the property so there's all kind of options in with fha now since we've been on the insured escrow i'm gonna go i'm gonna come down here it says repair escrow amount that means there's certain things that need to be done to bring this property up to FHA standard. Um, review the PCR for repair escrow items. You say, where do I find the PCR? Well, you go up here to these tabs. We're on the property info tab at the moment. Under addendums, you're gonna find a lot of good information. This is where you're gonna find, um, it tells you about the bidding information, the escrow, and the PCR. Actually, this, this one, the escrow amount is gonna be listed under escrow, of course. I'm going to pull that up. It's going to take just a minute here, but this is where it's going to, at the bottom here. What's one of those? Okay. Keep. Do I do keep? Okay. It's going to take a minute, but that's where it's going to list the, the itemization. It's going to itemize the list of repairs that need to be done on the property. 
um, to bring it up to FHA standard. It's going to have the cost of each price. This, these prices and these um, repairs come from the HUD appraisal. So it's going to actually come from there. We may not be able to pull it up. That's no biggie. But that's where you find it, right there. You also have a PCR report. Um, it's, going to, it's going to tell you the initial inspection that the uh, contractor, the HUD contractor, the field service manager that went out at the beginning before the property was listed, it's going to give you their complete report, what they found wrong. It's going to tell you a little bit about the condition of the property. Bidding information, that's where it's going to tell you how to bid. Um, you sometimes they put the contract packages here under this addendums tab sometimes not we're going to show you um, where to find those addendums where to find those contract packages you also have a maps tab this is going to bring up a map of the property and down here towards the bottom it's going to give you um, to get directions you're going to put your address in to get step-by-step -step directions to the property you have an agent info tab this tab will tell you, it tells you the asset manager, gives you the asset manager phone number and email address, gives you the listing broker, our phone number and email address, and also the field service manager. So all your contacts are right here on the same page. It's all the information all together for you. This is a very important page, by the way, uh, for let's say that you have a listing agent that you need to get in touch with or there's something that you need for them to do. We're here to try to work with you, and this is uh, the uh, mandate of everyone that works with HUD is to provide you with the best information and to assist you in any way possible. Mm -hmm. I want to bring your attention. The first thing I look at at a property, if I have a buyer that's really interested in a property, is this date up here. Even though this property shows a listing period through March 15th, watch this date up here. It says bid submission deadline. This means that the bids are going to be opened up after this date. On 224 at 12 o'clock or 11.59 p.m. Is when, they're going to, is when the bids have to be in. So your offer has to be in by this deadline. Um, as you've got, I believe it says, eight days and 12 hours left. So make sure you're watching this date so that you don't miss it because what will happen after this date, HUD will, the asset companies will open up all of the bids at once, and if there is an acceptable net to HUD in that in those offers, they will accept the property and it will disappear off a of HUD home store. You will not be able to bid on it. So make sure you're keeping your eye on this date. If you had an investor, an investor saying, when can I bid on this property? It's in this exclusive period. That's when you can go to this date down here and you can say, yes, you can bid after March 15th if the property is still available. One thing, too, to remember is even if you have an owner-occupant that has looked at a property and it's in extended, make sure that you note to HUD that this is an owner-occupant yes. and even during a, an all-bidder stage. It's very important because HUD gives priority to owner-occupants. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you another really good thing if your buyer is going FHA, um, the as-is value right here. I'm, going to, I'm circling it with the cursor. This as-is value is, is HUD's appraisal value. This is the appraisal you will have to use if your buyer is going FHA. And Daryl's going to tell you a little bit more about the HUD appraisal and when your buyer may have to bring cash to closing. Yeah. Again, keep in mind that uh, when you're using FHA financing, the appraisal that you that Wendy just showed you, mm -hmm. it, this Thank is you. the one that must be used. And that FHA appraisal is only good for 120 days. So they usually have those appraisals available for you. You can request them. Now, if you're using FHA financing, you cannot use a second appraisal. That means if your buyer uh, is going to be uh, bringing, you, it means that your buyer is going to be bringing cash to closing because they use that number, the number that HUD has on file as the appraisal. Now, if uh, they, they have to be bringing cash to closing if, if your buyer offers over that asking price, and the financing is FHA with repair escrow, as we talked about before, they actually put that amount over the asking price and they'll be responsible for that at the time of, clo at the time of closing. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, did I go the right way here? Yes, um, Daryl's going to tell you a little bit about the contract package if it's not under the addendums tab. Right. I'm going to pull up the websites as, okay. he, um, as sure. he goes over them. Okay, remember that there are three asset management companies that are working in our area, which is 1A. The three companies is Hometelus, 
the second is Ophori, and the third is Pimco. So if you are looking uh, at, we'll say, a property like we did a while ago, and you do not find that contract package, go to these three uh, groups. Home Telos, go to uh, Home Telos First, that's H-O-M-E-T-E-L-O-S First, dot com. Click on Real Estate Professionals at the top. And I'm, I've got it here now. I've pulled it up and my cursor is right here. I'm going to click on it mm -hmm. just to show you that's where you will go. Um, it's kind of hard to know to go there, but that's mm -hmm. where you would go to get your forms, your contracts. And you just come down here to Real Estate Professionals and you would click General. Mm -hmm. If you're dealing with a government or not, or if it's a government or nonprofit, making the offer, they would click here, and then Good Neighbor Next Door would click here. And listed there will be all your contracts and addendums and anything necessary to put together that package. Exactly. The second one we're going to go to is a FORI. And uh, you go to www.afori, that's O-F-O-R-I-R-E-O.com. And from the web browser, click on Forms, as Wendy's doing now. I'm actually in the website. You can actually mm -hmm. click from the web browser as well. Mm -hmm. But I like to see these sites. They have a ton of great news too on the right here, the latest news with yeah. HUD. But here you would just click under brokers and then you would click under forms right here. Okay, and that, that again, you'll have your addendums and your contracts. The third one is PIMCO. And uh, PIMCO, if you want to uh, get together that package, if you do not see it uh, on HUDHomestore.com, you go to HUD PIMCO, H U D P E M C O dot com, go to forms, con and, and you have and to go to one, we're in 1A, mm -hmm. um, all of South Carolina is the 1A region, and click on that. Right. And another great thing about uh, this particular site and PIMCO is that they have excellent tutorial videos available, mm -hmm. uh, and we would like for you, if you will, to take a look at them. A lot of questions are answered as it comes to, uh, when it comes to that. You see, I just went down to owner occupant. It may take a minute for it to load, but that's that's where you would go on the Pimp Coast site as well. And there, it's pulling up. Um, it starts pulling up a fillable form. That they have a fillable contract package, and so does Home Tellos, which you can just fill out this form on Pimpco, and it pre-populates your contract package. It alleviates a lot of mistakes, and it makes it a little bit simpler for you. Okay, um, we read for this one. Okay, um, we're running a little bit out of time, but I wanted to go down to show you where you submit an offer, and then Daryl's going to give you some of the addresses. Let me pull that up now. This is great to be able to pull this up while we're going through the site. While she's looking at this, mm -hmm. by the way, write this down. Write these addresses down. I'll tell you in just a second why they're so important. Okay, and we've got those up there. This is the address. You'll send the contract packages. But if you, you've done all your work, you've got the buyer, you've got the paperwork all done and you're ready to submit the offer online, you go down here to submit an offer. And it's just going to be a really short, you're pretty much just entering in what you've written on the contract, the hard copy contract. You're just going to go in, you're going to put in your NAID type, uh, which you're probably going to be a selling broker. You're going to put your NAID number in, your real estate license number. They have that little security code there to put in and then um, you'll go ahead and hit verify. Once they verify your NAID number, it'll almost be a form word for word as your, your printable contract package. You'll just fill in the, the lines, make sure you're filling in the numbers, the social security numbers, that everything is in there correctly because that is, that is what HUD is going to be getting when they look at the offer. Make sure your, your um, percentages uh, dollar amounts are in there, so that it's going to be the correct the correct net going to HUD. Just look it over, and when you submit it, you will want to um, you'll get a confirmation page. You will want to print that confirmation page, keep that, and you'll also want to write that confirmation number on your contract if it's accepted. But keep that confirmation page, and um, and then you're pretty much you're just submitting the offer, and then you're waiting to hear from HUD the next day. You can check. You can actually check to see if that offer has been accepted um, under your bidder account. When you log in under your bidder account, up here at the top, you're going to see bidder functions. That's where you can check the status of any offer you have in there. If you haven't received the email yet, you can check there to see if it's accepted, canceled or rejected, counteroffered. Um, it'll tell you there, so you've got all your information from your own login. 
Let me mention to you these three different uh, addresses that we have on the screen. I hope that you will make sure you put that somewhere very important. These three companies actually work nationwide, but there are certain regions that those HUD contracts go to. And you'll see that there are two in Atlanta and one in Nashville. For all your home tellers, this is what the address that you'll put on any home tellers property. Remember, under the agent information, you can find out which company has that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Afori is in Atlanta and then PIMCO. Now, please don't go to HUDGov and take a look at these different ones because sometimes, especially like PIMCO, they're in Hawaii. This is the, this is the areas that you're going to be sending it to locally. So Hometelus is in Nashville, Afori is in Atlanta, and PIMCO is in Atlanta. And make sure now, when you get your package, when you get your confirmation number, you write that on your contract. When you get ready to send it, send an original copy with that. And of course, the original contract, the original one that you filled out with your buyer needs to be in their hand, in that asset manager's hand, mm -hmm. within 24 hours. You just gotta make sure that you oh, do yeah, send it with a trackable package so that you can track it in case um, 